In the past, we always created SDR or standard dynamic range images, and those could be displayed on any monitor. But now we have the ability to create new HDR or high dynamic range images, which clearly show a much greater range of tones that truly capture what's in the scene, but they require an HDR monitor to be displayed. So how can we share a single file, which is going to support these beautiful new HDR monitors, and at the same time, can still be displayed in a nice way if someone only has an SDR monitor? Well, the answer to that is a new technology called Gain Maps, and you'll learn all about them in this video. Obviously, when you edit an image, you can create an HDR version, and you can create an SDR version. I've got videos on all those processes elsewhere that I'll link below. But if you want to share these images, what do you do if not share two different files? Well, you would have to share an HDR image for someone to see an HDR, and then a browser that understands them would try and do the best it can to create an SDR. But it's not going to create the version you would create. Instead, it's going to use an automated process called tone mapping, and it's going to look like this. This is actual tone mapping from a browser based on my HDR only image. And as you can see, it creates a passable result, but it's really not that great. The highlights are oversaturated. The tonal relationships are kind of flat. The details in the rocks look pretty flat. Compare that to the SDR that I created. The rocks look better. The highlights look much better. Clearly, when you're in full control of the SDR, the results just look better than when you leave it to the browser to try and do its best because they can't possibly understand the artistic intent behind every image. And if your browser doesn't understand HDR at all, you probably will actually get a result that looks something like this, where it just may render in a very strange way. So obviously, a lack of support is a concern for HDR, and tone mapping is also a concern. We really want an ability to package our HDR with an SDR that we can control to get the best of both. And that's what game maps are all about. You control both versions of the image, and they get packaged into a single file. So let's create one. I'm going to switch over to my source image. And to export this as a game map, we're going to use Adobe Camera Raw. And I'll show you how to use that manually. But first, let's use WebShot Pro because it helps simplify a lot of the process. You'll need version 5.8.4 or later. And in settings under file, make sure your HDR section is set for output to HDR. You're not going to convert down to SDR. And your HDR format should be set to JPEG or AVIF via Adobe Camera Raw. We're actually going to use Adobe Camera Raw to create the game map as well as to control the SDR version of our image. And it's just a side note. I happen to be working with an HDR image here, but if your image is 8 or 16 bit, it's an SDR image, you can still create an HDR. If you check this box, this is Enhance SDR to HDR, it will actually upgrade your image during the export to create the HDR, and you can even create a gain map from that. So that's a great way to work with your existing edits, or perhaps you always edit for print, but you'd like to create an option that looks a little bit better online for sharing through a gain map and just automatically create the HDR. So this won't apply here because our image is already HDR, but I just want to mention that option if that applies to you. So let's go click Done. And normally we just go and choose the cropping, size, sharpening, other settings we'd want for this. And then just click Sharpen. And it'll go do all that work. And then it's going to open up Adobe Camera Raw for us to go ahead and process the final steps of this image. First, we want to create the SDR rendition. So obviously this is the HDR version of the image. We can see the data in the histogram. But down below here, see this section that says Preview for SDR Display? This isn't just a preview. This actually controls the real SDR output if you output directly to SDR or if you output a game map that has the HDR and the SDR in it. So when we turn this on, we get a preview of an SDR image. And all these slider values have already been dialed in the way I want them for this image because WebSharp Pro remembers the settings you use on a specific image. So if you ever re-export it, you don't have to go and change all these different sliders. They're just ready to go and you can tweak them if you want or go ahead and save the image. But let's take a look at what they do. And the way that I like to work with this conversion process is I want to be careful that I don't blow out any highlights. You know, I'm squeezing a bright image down to the SDR range and it would be pretty easy to start clipping some things in the highlights. And to help protect that, I can hover across the image and watch the readout of my histogram. Or an even simpler way is to go and grab the picker and drop a few points to protect. So something like this, I can now monitor these three points and I see the RGB readouts up top. And I'm looking for things like the red channel clipping to 255. I've got this set right to the limits of what's possible with this SDR without clipping because I already processed it. And you'll see if I go and pull back the brightness just ever so slightly, it's already backing off of the red channel there. So having these samplers just helps you really push the limits of the best possible SDR. So the controls here, these are all global controls. We've got a brightness setting we can dial in. We can change the contrast, the clarity across the image, 
highlights in the image, the shadows in the image, whites, and then saturation is not all saturation, it's really highlight saturation. So it's just affecting the brighter areas of the image here. A lot of times those highlights can get oversaturated or perhaps undersaturated, and that's a nice way to dial things in. So you can tweak these as you need for your image. Every image has its own unique needs, but I already dialed it in the way that I think it needs to be for this image. So I'm gonna go and just simply right click and reset to open. So these are the slider values that I already previously set before I started recording this video. So now that I've dialed in my SDR display, I'm ready to export a gain map. And it doesn't matter whether you're showing the preview or not, these slider values will get used for the SDR version. So now to save, you can just hit Command or Control S or go and click the icon for it right up top here. And when you click this, you get the export option for Adobe Camera Raw. Normally with WebSharp Pro, I just dial in these sliders and then I hit Command S, Enter, Enter, because I don't change anything in this dialog. Once it's set up, it'll just automatically export. So it's a very fast process, but let's go through the options here. You can set the destination as you like, of course, the folder. You can rename the file if you want, but the important stuff is done in this format and color space option here. For the format, you wanna choose JPEG to get a JPEG game map. That's the only thing that's really supported for browsers, but it's already supported in Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Brave, and Opera. That's like 75% of browsers already. And with a JPEG game map, if the browser doesn't support it, the base image is an SDR image, so it automatically falls back to a safe SDR. So it doesn't matter if you don't have HDR, it doesn't matter if you don't have a browser that supports game maps, you'll at least get a good looking SDR image. So that's the beauty of choosing JPEG. Now you might also consider something like AVIF if you have the new iOS 17, it now supports AVIF images in the Photos app, which is great for showing HDR right on your iPhone, but this is not gonna give you a gain map. And even if it did, AVIF isn't as widely supported. So the best option for the foreseeable future here is gonna be to use a JPEG gain map. And then when you choose that, the way you're getting a gain map is by enabling HDR display. So it doesn't really say gain map, but that's what this is all about. If you export as an HDR, it automatically embeds the SDR version in it. You can of course dial in the metadata the way you want, but I would just generally choose to either have it at all or all except raw info, which kind of slims the file because I'm using WebSharp Pro to manage my metadata. And then for quality with the JPEG, you're gonna to wanna to push a little higher than you normally would because an HDR image is gonna be more likely to show artifacts. So I think 10 is a good default. In some cases, you might wanna push as high as 12, which is the limit. But generally speaking, 10 is going to be a good option. I already mentioned you need to have the enable HDR display on. And then for your color space, you have a choice of options here. HDR P3 is the way to go if you have full control over your image, because that's going to give you better color and really help push the limits of the file format. And the browser is going to render that correctly in nearly all cases. The place where you wouldn't want to choose that would be if you're uploading to a service which may reprocess your image, it might strip out the profile leaving you with an untagged JPEG. And in that case, you'd wanna use HDR with the sRGB color space. So this is the safest option of all, but if you're gonna to upload to your own website, then P3 is a great option, and that's what I like to use for the best possible results. Down below for the sizing and output sharpening, just leave those off if you're using WebSharp Pro. If you're manually exporting, you can set some options here. So this is all ready to go. And like I said, once you've done this once, you can just, hit enter to default to save, and you don't have to go through this ever again if you're using WebSharp Pro. So I'm gonna hit save, and then I'm gonna hit okay because WebSharp Pro will save these values back with the image. But this is gonna go ahead and export my game map, which is right here marked as a JPEG. Before we take a closer look at the output, let's step back a moment and redo the export using a manual approach that you could use if you don't have WebSharp Pro. So our image, like most, is gonna have multiple layers and that's not something you can send into Adobe Camera Raw. So we need to flatten the image. In addition, if you're gonna crop it, you have to do that before Adobe Camera Raw as well. So both of these can be facilitated by duplicating the image. So let's go up to Image, Duplicate, and we're just gonna create a temporary copy for the export. And we need to check this Duplicate Merged Layers Only. This will flatten the image. We'll say, okay, we've got our temporary copy. If you're gonna crop it, now's the time to do it. And then go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And then inside here, the Camera Raw Filter does not recognize you've got an HDR input. So turn on the HDR option. And so now you're working with HDR and the next step here is to go 
just like we did before and do the preview for SDR display. All your sliders will be reset each time you export back to the neutral positions. So you'll need to go and figure out the best way to adjust these. I've already kind of gone through that. So I'm just going to leave this at the defaults. And then when you're ready, you just hit Command S or the button up top here. And in here, you're going to basically make the same choices we made before. But in addition, you want to go down and make sure you use the resize to fit. Choose your options for resizing. And then if you're going to use any output sharpening, turn that on as well and choose your sharpening. Otherwise, from this point forward, things are the same. You just simply hit save and then you can hit cancel or OK to close out of this. And then when you're done with that, of course, you get this dummy image. And so we're going to go and just close that. And I'm also going to discard this extra copy we made because it doesn't have the correct SDR version. And now let's take a closer look at the first game map we created. In the Mac OS Finder, it doesn't support game maps at this time or HDR images really of any kind, I guess, other than uh, EXR. So you're going to see the SDR display. Let's take a look, though, at how it would look in a browser. So if I go and drag this over to I've got Firefox open. This is not a browser that supports game maps. When I drag it in here, we're getting the SDR version of the image. So it doesn't look dark like we saw earlier. It actually gives us a really nice looking SDR image. I'm not seeing HDR here because the browser doesn't support it. And if it went to someone whose monitor doesn't support HDR, this is what they'd get. But you can see it's a really nice looking result. This is the worst case scenario. And let's go back. Let's grab this and drag it into Chrome, which understands JPEG game maps. And now we see the true HDR from the same JPEG. I mean, JPEG doesn't normally support HDR, but a JPEG with a game map does. And let's just compare these directly. You can see here's our SDR in Firefox and here's our HDR in Chrome. And the beauty of it is it works everywhere and we have an SDR version that we control. There's no tone mapping that's been done to this image whatsoever. It looks just the way that we wanted it to look. And then to explore things a little bit further, I've got a new piece of software Adobe's released called the Game Map Demo App. I'll add a link below the video in case you want to download it. And this tool is, is really not meant for photographers. This is meant as something kind of quick and dirty for software developers to understand and get excited about and implement game maps. So this is not really something you're meant to see, but it can be helpful for learning about game maps. And I think the fact that Adobe has created this piece of software just to help promote game maps really says a lot about how important this technology is. So I've already opened uh, the same image that I created as a, a JPEG game map. And you can see it's open here. When you open this app, you can right click and add images to have multiple different images here if you want to compare them. You can ignore most of what this app is going to show you. There's just a few things I'll point out. On the right here, it says this is an SDR photo with a game map. So it's explicitly telling you that this image has been recognized as a JPEG with a game map. If I had an AVIF HDR, it wouldn't tell me there's a game map here. So this is a really clear way to understand if the file does or does not support game maps. Obviously, you could test it by just simply opening up in something like Firefox and Chrome because Firefox doesn't support it. You'll need an HDR monitor to test that way, of course. Otherwise, Chrome will show you the SDR version of the game map. And that's why I think this tool can be really nice. The other thing I, I really like about this tool is it has these different modes. And you can ignore most of them. But this adaptive mode is the way that a browser would work that understands game maps. And by default, this HDR capacity is going to be set to automatic, which means it's set to the limits of your display, which would be zero if it's an SDR monitor or higher if it's an HDR monitor. My monitor can range anywhere from two to four stops of HDR capacity, depending on how bright I've set it. If you set this capacity down to manual, now it's going to try and tone map to the limits of that display. So up at the range of five doesn't matter because my monitor can't do it and this image doesn't go that high. But if we bring it down, We'll start to see the image change. And what we're seeing here is a simulation of what different HDR monitors would show us. And the beautiful thing here about a game map is it's not simply just about the full image. So right here, that's the limit of my image is right at about three stops. You can see the data cuts out there. So my image is designed for a monitor that can display three stops of HDR headroom. This would be the best possible result. But maybe your monitor only supports, say, one stop of headroom. Well, that's a result you'd get. And the way it works is it's interpolating between the full HDR and the SDR version. It's not using any tone mapping. It's interpolating between two versions of the image that I control. So everything in between the full HDR and SDR is now enhanced because we have a game map. And if all you have is an SDR, 
then you're down to this version of the image. So you can see just how much benefit there is at different levels of uh, imagery here. One thing to watch out for though with this slider is if your image can actually go above the limits of your display, don't move this slider above that limit because if you do, it's going to try and render that in an absolute way and then things will clip. And that's not what a browser would do because a browser would never let you go above the upper limit of your display. So my display right now is a limit of like three. So I shouldn't be using anything to the right of this display because it's not really legit. But I'm getting a proper simulation of anything up to the limits of my display. Now to learn more about HDR photography, click to this next video or visit gregbensphotography.com slash HDR.